Connie is a former Olympic race walker who won three gold medals, but this isn't the kind of accomplishment that makes you rich or famous. She now shares a home with her husband, Rick, an IRS auditor with whom she has a strained relationship. They spent a lot of money on therapies because they couldn't have children, but regrettably Connie miscarried the child when she finally became pregnant. At that point, Rick chose to accept a traveling job at his place of employment, allowing him to travel for three weeks each month. When he is at home, he treats Connie badly, frequently telling her that she is unemployed and that they lost money since she insisted on having many treatments when he was ready to give up after the first, and chastises her for overspending on her coupon compulsion. The part about Connie hoarding coupons and then buying items in bulk is true. She stores everything in the nursery to cover the walls and distract herself from her loss. Rick's absence has a few benefits, including giving Connie the chance to get to know Jojo, her next-door neighbor who also loves coupons and has a YouTube channel promoting money-saving advice. She is having problems getting job because her identity was recently stolen and she lives with her mother, Josie. She flings herself at the mailman Earl in her leisure time and tries to sell lipstick door to door, but neither endeavor is succeeding. Greg, the cashier at the grocery, receives dozens of coupons from Connie for her purchases. Her final ticket drops from over 100 to 16, but it also delays the queue for a while. If you monitor your pennies, Connie likes to say, the dollars will take care of themselves. She becomes furious one afternoon as she organizes the goods on the shelf after discovering the baby wallpaper amid the boxes. She makes the decision to eat a lot of cereal in the hopes that it will make her feel better. Connie utilizes all of her internal rage to send a complaint email to the cereal manufacturer after discovering that the cereal is stale. A few days later, Connie receives a complimentary cereal coupon in the mail along with an apology letter from the manufacturer for the rancid food. Greg tells her she isn't unusual and that all businesses will send free coupons to those who complain when she goes to the market to exchange it with a haughty attitude. This motivates Connie to write a ton of letters to various manufacturers, even if the things weren't defective, and she ends up receiving a ton of free item vouchers as a result. Jojo is startled to witness such a tactic, and even tries to buy a coupon from Connie because it would still be less expensive than the actual price once Connie displays it to her. She makes Connie realize that making a 100% profit off of items she received for free would make for a successful business. She learns from online research that the coupons are produced close to her home in Mexico, where they might go and steal a bunch to sell. Jojo is initially dubious, but she agrees to help because she is in so much debt. Ken, a loss prevention officer in Nevada, is working at a nearby market. A cashier checks a coupon when he's having problems using it and instantly finds it's a fake. The manager requests that they still follow it because the elderly woman has been a longtime customer. But Ken declines because rules are rules. The elderly woman called Ken names because of his terrible manners. Later, as he boards a flight to head back home, a comparable circumstance takes place. When a mother asks him to move seats so her daughter may watch the landing to help her calm down, he politely declines, saying it's a lesson the child needs to learn. Ken finally makes it to his lonely apartment in Utah and screams at the TV. Connie and Jojo visit the coupon factory in Mexico the following day to observe the workers and their shifts. They choose to approach Alejandro and Rosa, a couple who are already breaking the law but do not appear to be particularly threatening. They believe they are going to be robbed as they pursue the couple in the car. But after Connie and Jojo make it clear they are there to assist, Alejandro welcomes them to his home for a little conversation. Rosa turns out to be pregnant and their pay is a joke making it simple for Connie and Jojo to make their offer. In the event that the couple steals coupons, they will resale them later in the USA and split the proceeds. Rosa persuades Alejandro to do this for the sake of their unborn child, even though he isn't sure it's a good idea. It's not that tough to make a plan. Alejandro works in printing, which is a section of the factory, and Rosa does work in redemption. Typically, neither party is aware of what the other is doing. Every time they print a coupon, they always make one extra that is meant to be thrown away. However, Alejandro may send those extras to Connie and Jojo when their trucks distribute the coupons around the USA. 
There won't be any issues at the border because all they'll see is a box of vouchers and not any evidence of authorized activity. The pair receives their first batch of coupons a few days later, so they quickly create a website to sell them on and advertise it on Connie's channel. They make a ton of money off their business right away, but the supermarkets soon catch wind of it as well. Ken starts a thorough investigation in search of a credit card number used to pay for one of the numerous purchases made using these coupons after receiving dozens of letters and phone calls from managers lamenting the amount of money they are losing. After 11 days of labor, Ken visits the housewife who used the voucher and discovers that a black woman on YouTube is promoting the business that sells them. If you monitor the pennies, the bucks will take care of themselves, reads the website's credo when Ken gets back to the workplace. Rewinding to the couple, they discover their PayPal account has been frozen as a result of receiving too much money too rapidly. They must demonstrate that their firm is legitimate in order to unfreeze it. Due of their lack of knowledge and desperation, they choose to get in touch with Tina, a well-known hacker on the dark web. They are to blame for everything. Tina chastises them for spreading this information so widely. She then says that they need a front for their business so they can clean their money after erasing JoJo's tapes. They will receive many false identifications, bank accounts, and a covert workplace. In addition, they must wait six months before using their funds to give every link to their real names time to vanish. Tina provides them with a unique encrypted USB stick so they may save their essential files in it after they agree she would be paid 10% for her assistance. There are no online hints left for Ken to follow because of Tina's rapid thinking. When he goes to the FBI, they promise to look into it, but, in reality, they think a problem with coupons is ridiculous and pass the case off to Albert, their lowest desk employee. A case is accepted by Albert. While Ken continues to leave daily notes for the FBI, the coupon fraud starts to expand into a very lucrative enterprise once more using the JoJo's Cosmetics brand as a cover and Tina's false IDs. The two are prepared to spend their money six months later, but they must first clean it because they recall Tina saying it was unclean. Connie decides that they need to acquire a lot of expensive items to be resold later, and the money from those transactions will be considered as clean since she is recalling a tale Rick told about a client of his. Connie and JoJo go on an extraordinarily pricey shopping spree after persuading all the banks to give them the money in cash because they need it to hire staff for their beauty business. They purchase firearms, boats, sports vehicles, and even private planes. After that, they travel to Las Vegas to talk about their future plans. Connie wants to attempt the reproductive procedure once more, and JoJo will cover her mother's mortgage. In the meantime, Ken receives the long-awaited call from the FBI. He is told by Albert that he is powerless online because all cookie trails have been erased by a professional. But he'll send someone who can genuinely assist because the coupons are being distributed via the outdated normal mail. Ken meets Simon, a mail inspector, two days later. Simon agrees to take on the issue and requests that Ken order a few vouchers from the website so they may thoroughly examine the system. After a few days, the envelope is delivered, and Simon immediately realizes that despite the fact that the envelope claims to be from Kansas, it actually came from Arizona because of the unique numbers on the online stamp. He accepts to bring Ken with him since he is shortly taking a flight to Phoenix and is familiar with every grocery there. Rewinding to Connie, she schedules a visit to the fertility center and brings Jojo along as support as she hasn't told Rick she's doing this. Connie decides to use a donor's seat rather of her husband's after the doctor tells her that this is her final shot. Later that night, when Tina approaches them once more to inquire about the whereabouts of all the money, she is extremely irate to hear their response because they seem to have missed the point. They had already cleansed the money by using the JoJo's Cosmetics brand. They must now sell every item they purchased as soon as possible and deposit the money back into the bank daily in little quantities. Connie informs Rick that she has a sales job now and that she no longer uses coupons when he returns from his most recent business trip and observes the new TV she purchased. Rick is quite happy with this and refers to her as his new wife, which makes Connie even more determined to undergo the treatment using a donor seed. Ken and Simon are questioning every cashier in the vicinity in the meantime, 
looking for any customers who are obsessed with coupons. When they meet Greg, they acquire the information they require. He doesn't know Connie's name, but he gives them a description of her and notes the tagline, Two Pennies, that Ken recalls seeing on the website. They visit the neighborhood post office to ask if any of the employees have any information about a coupon blonde. When people hear the word coupons, they squeal on Earl because he was constantly watching JoJo's saving tips on YouTube. But nobody recalls Connie. Going back to the couple, it's getting too difficult to sell everything they own on eBay because there is so much of it. When they go to a cafe for a drink, they run into two men who belong to a gun club. As a result, they acquire the address of their club and go there later to sell all of their guns. Despite JoJo's incredible pitch, the leader still declines to purchase them, so the pair decides to offer them a good deal if they purchase all of them. In order to seal the transaction, Ken and Simon question Earl alone, but he steadfastly refuses to provide any information. When he is freed, he visits Jojo's home. There, he places a note for her in an envelope that looks like regular mail amid the bills, which Josie accepts without realizing its significance. Earl is unaware that Ken and Simon have followed him there and are now keeping watch outside the house for however long is necessary. By the time Jojo gets home, the men have realized that the black woman is the one the housewife had seen in the YouTube video. When Jojo celebrates the incredible sale, she just closed by getting out of her car and starting to dance in the middle of her driveway. The following morning, Jojo is preoccupied with her quarrel with Josie and ignores the mail while driving to the stash home as usual. Ken and Simon decide to follow her there and recognize Connie as the blonde from Greg's description when they also spot Connie. To start the operation effectively, Simon gathers additional postal inspectors, and they now have more information. They had little trouble figuring out who Connie and Jojo are, especially once they present Greg with a photo and get his approval. Later that night, Jojo can't sleep, so she goes to the kitchen to have a snack after checking on her mother. When she eventually locates Earl's message imploring her to leave town, Simon and his men show up and arrest Connie, Jojo, and Josie, but it's too late. Earl is shocked to see Jojo's face on television when their homes and the stash house are raided and the arrest is reported. Rick and Josie instantly admit they had nothing to do with anything and agree to help the authorities when the questioning starts. Even though Jojo tries to play the victim card and claims she has no idea what they are talking about, they have discovered her recordings on her computer. On the other hand, Connie confesses to her wrongdoing, but she is horrified to learn that they could be sentenced to 40 years to life in prison for fraud. They'll be kinder to Jojo if she fully accepts responsibility for initiating it all. So Connie agrees to the arrangement. She believes that Josie paid the bail, but it was actually Earl who was waiting outside for her with flowers. Jojo was released on bond. Connie, unfortunately, isn't as fortunate. Rick simply stops by to reprimand her and won't pay the bond, so Connie seeks for a divorce. As the investigation goes on, the inspectors determine that Alejandro and Rosa are the source of the coupons. But by the time they learn this, the couple has already vanished. The Mexican government won't pursue them because the trail is now completely dead. Connie makes the wise choice to retain an exorbitantly priced attorney. On the day of the trial, the attorney persuades everyone that Connie and Jojo merely exploited a loophole, just like businesses do frequently. Jojo receives 10 days in jail and a year of probation after his strategy is successful, while Connie is sentenced to 11 months in prison, with the possibility of parole. Simon and Ken are unhappy with the outcome and ask the state attorney why the judge was so kind to the women. The state attorney responds that the brands on the coupons pushed for leniency in order to avoid negative publicity. The 80 million this swindle cost them is nothing but pennies to such mega corporations. Simon tells Ken he's a fine man and he's glad to have worked with him, but he also needs to turn down the attitude a little because the case is now over, and then he must depart. Each person's life changes as time goes on. Ken starts acting a little nicer, making allowances for previous customers with fictitious discounts, and eventually working up the guts to create a profile on a dating app. 
Connie spends her months in prison with a large pregnant tummy after obtaining the divorce she desired and having success with reproductive treatment. Fortunately, the majority of the scam's profits are confiscated by the authorities who mistakenly believe the boxes in the nursery contain only food. Jojo gets to save those boxes because she knows Connie has been keeping money hidden in them all along. After getting together with Earl, he and Jojo relocated to Montenegro, a nation that does not extradite its citizens, to launch a new fraud using a different cosmetics brand while they wait for Connie to visit when she is eventually released so they can collaborate once more. Please subscribe and enable notifications so you can view more content like this. I appreciate you coming.